Good morning, and welcome to this portion of the program here at New Hope Community Church in South San Francisco, California. We welcome you. Thank you for being a part of this portion of the program. Tell a friend, subscribe to our YouTube at nhccssf.org. That's New Hope Community Church, South San Francisco. Dot org. We look forward to helping you to navigate through some waters. We're going to be talking specifically during this month of the month of March on giving, the gift of giving. And I really do believe that there is a gift in giving. So let's start off with a word of prayer and we'll dive right into the word of God. I pray that God's blessings will be upon your life. Tell a friend as we talk about these important issues are given. Father, we come boldly before your throne once again this morning. We ask for your blessings. We ask, O oh Lord, that there will be listening ears and attentive hearts to receive all that we have for the word of God has given us this morning. And may we absorb it and, Lord, appreciate what you give us through your Holy Spirit. Father, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me first preface this right here. When I was a kid... Uh, just four to five years of age, being brought up in a large family of six children and my mom and dad and always sitting down at the dinner table and eating. And, you know, we were fast eaters because at that point in time, if, if you didn't eat, you had to finish everything on your plate before you got anything else. So we were kind of racing to who's going to get the nice piece of chicken and whatnot and things of that nature. But one of the things that my parents taught each and every one of our, us and our siblings to do, and that was to share. We had to learn how to give. Everything that we had, which wasn't much, we had to learn how to give each one of our siblings some of what we had. And I believe that established some of the very fundamental foundational things in my life in the gift of giving. And I never forgot that. And I think today there's a lot of misconception within the church as far as giving. And I, I put it in this preference right here. We need to understand, and, uh, and let me just say this right here, that God does not love you any lesser or any more whether you give or whether you don't. And that's totally up to you. So let's look at first and foremost that wonderful scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting out with verse 6. And he said, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. To let each, so let each one of you give as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly. Are of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Lord, bless your word. You see, when I look at that portion of the scripture, God is not forcing us to do anything in and of itself. Second, let me say this right here. Many people think that the New Testament does not necessarily teach about tithing because of this specific uh, verse in and of itself, or verses, I should say. But if you go back, you know, and, and we look at uh, Matthew chapter 23, 23, and I'm not going to get into that scripture right now, but it's really kind of comparing the old and the new. But God is really telling us, you know, what he said in the Old Testament, if you look at in the book of Malachi, that last book in the Old Testament, and, and confirm that it's the only time in the scripture that God said, test me. There's never any, any other portion of the scripture where God said, test me and see what I will do for you. In other words, he's saying, look, I don't need your money. I just want you to remember two or three things. And I'm just going to give you a little prelude of the gift of giving here this morning. But remember this right here. When you began to give unto God, you are given out of the abundance of your heart. God is not forcing you to do that. What he wants to do is to shift your heart, to, to find out and test you. Do you really love me? Do you trust me to, for your finances, for all of your sufficiencies in life? Do you really trust me? Because he knows that money is extremely 
personal. And nobody really likes to talk about it until they don't have it or they got plenty of it. So one of the things when we stop and think about that right there, God is saying, test me. Only time in the entire Bible that God says, test me. He's asking us because in the Old Testament, it's a requirement of 10%, which is the baseline of what God is asking for. But if you stop and you think about that right there, he's asking for the very top of the 10% in the Old Testament as opposed to the New Testament because there's a big difference. The Old Testament on giving was based on judgment and the other thing in and of itself was based on uh, fear, fear and judgment. So when you look at the Old Testament, giving was based on fear and judgment. If you didn't give and you cheated God, bam, you were dead. But when we look at the New Testament and he says, give as a cheerful giver, give as unto the Lord coming from the heart is done with love and honor. Love, honor, and trust in God. So I look at it in this concept right here. What makes me give? Well, I give because I have faith that God will take care of me that God is bigger than my finances, that God is bigger than me. So I use it as faith because it's a requirement. I feel that God is telling me, trust him with my finances. Remember the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I'm going to first trust him by having faith in him and then I'm going to honor him because he was the one who gave me the finances in the first place. It was never mine to keep. It was mine to give back to him. So the Old Testament was based on fear and judgment. And tithing must come, I realize, from the heart, from faith, and at least by honoring God. Tithing actually, for me personally, saved me financially. And I believe that was the trust and the faith that I had in God. Remember, anytime you're talking about giving and tithing, tithing is a spiritual discipline. You cannot just do it. It has to come from the heart. It has to be an element of faith. It has to be an element of trust in the living God because that in and of itself can help you to relinquish. Again, it's one of the most difficult concepts for people to do because people today look at, why should I give to the church? Especially during a pandemic. Churches are closed. Why should I give to the church because they're on YouTube or Zoom or other uh, electronic devices or, uh, or all types of uh, social media? Why should I give? Because it's still honoring unto the Lord. Listen, remember this right here. Why do God give us income so we can survive? The church has to survive too. I tithe. My mother taught me years ago, even when I would just sporadically go to church as a young kid, she would give me change and she would say, put that in the offering. And I would sit there and wrestle. Man, I got 50 cents here. Maybe I can keep a quarter and give the church a quarter. But I had conviction in my heart. And at the same time, my mother was watching me cross-eyed on the other side as I was putting money into that offering bag or into those pans. I made sure that I gave it to the Lord. Number one, I reverenced the person of Jesus Christ. And I know how important it was. Let's think about it for a moment. If you think about it, Jesus nor the apostle Paul ever condemned giving. They never condemn giving because Jesus said this right here. Who is on the coin? Give unto Caesar who is, uh, who, who, what belongs to Caesar and unto the Lord what belongs to the Lord. God already referenced that in the New Testament. And you know what? The apostle Paul, let me tell you something. Most people think because he was a tent maker, believe it or not, 
the Epistle Paul was a tent maker by choice. In fact, the Epistle Paul had money because the churches were providing for him as a missionary and to go around the world to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, you may know this or may not, but read chapter 8 in the book of Acts and they will tell you that the first evangelist was Philip. So the first person I want you to understand is that the Epistle Paul was not a beggar. He was a tent maker and that Philip himself was asking the Epistle Paul for money when he did not have it. So you got these things that are coming up and you look at this right here that God loves a cheerful giver. And the, Philip also was the first missionary that went out and, and preached the gospel outside of the Apostle Paul. So we look at these things right here and there's three things that we are sort of responsible for when it comes to giving. You see, first God said this right here, give unto the Lord as what your heart will give. Let's look, just look at this one. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to be in control of my finances. I want him to know that I'm giving as unto the Lord, not to necessarily get anything back, but my assurance is to know that he's going to take care of me regardless of the circumstances in my life. You know, he tells us to give unto the Lord. Secondly, he tells us to give unto the poor because the poor we will always have with us. And then thirdly, but not in, the, but not the least, he tells us to give to missions. And how do we give to missions? We give to missions through the church. We support our financial uh, uh, situations through missions as they are overseas or on the homeland of America and they're preaching the gospel. There are evangelists. There are people that's out there that are missionaries going to foreign countries all around the world. How in the world are they going to provide for themselves if we don't support them through missions? So I believe that this is just a prelude of what I'm going to be speaking about in a couple of weeks of the benefits, the gifts of giving. You know what? There's a few things in life that I can tell you that I have never regretted. I never regret coming to the person of Jesus Christ as my Savior, knowing that I was a sinner, knowing that I needed a Savior, one who can redeem my soul. I've never regretted that decision I've ever made. Secondly, I never ever regret getting married and being with the woman that I love for 40 years. I never would regret that. Thirdly, I never regret having children. They were the love of my life and still is. I'm grateful for that. I never regret going to college and getting an education. There's many things that I never regretted. I never regret my career or the way that God took me around to get me to this place right here, I do not regret. But one of the most important things I would never regret, I have never regret submitting myself and being disciplined and giving all the years of my life as a, as a child of God. I would never regret that. It's been blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings. I'm so grateful that God gave me a gift of giving, where it's not grudgingly, but as unto the Lord, that I am so open that when the Lord speaks to my heart, that I am a good steward with my finances, that God will speak to my heart what to give, when to give, and who to give to. You see, that's Holy Spirit led, folks. You cannot, listen, God never made the Epistle Paul a beggar. He's never made any giver that I know a beggar. I've never had to beg. I've had some tough times when I was younger. Why? Because I wasn't a great steward with my finances. But I want to tell you something. God helped me to grow up. And by his Holy Spirit, he gave me wisdom. I want you to understand something. I think the greatest decision that any child of God or any person that's out there that want to test God, the greatest decision that you can make is to learn how to, not only to be disciplined, but to be a, a disciplinary in giving unto the Lord. Don't give as to try to manipulate God to get something back. 
but it has to be, let me reiterate, it has to come from the heart, through faith, as you honor and love him. Through the heart, through faith, as you honor and you love the person of Jesus Christ. I pray this morning, wherever you at, that the blessings of God will be upon your life. Join us next Sunday as we dive into the gift of giving. God bless you until we see you again. Amen.